currently live in a very high cortisol environment. We are cortisol saturated and cortisol can actually sabotage your weight loss journey. Because when your cortisol levels are high, it makes you more insulin sensitive. And insulin is the major hormone that is responsible for fat loss. Why is that? Because when insulin isn't present, our body will go into a state of fat burning. The process of burning fat is known as lipolysis. And lipolysis is triggered when insulin levels are low. So in today's video, I want to go over something known as cortisol belly and why it happens and what signs you need to look out for if you think you have high cortisol levels and what you can do about it. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Daniela Joy, and I made this weight loss transformation through probably the most stressful time in my life. My cortisol levels were absolutely through the roof. I got into a severe car accident where my neck and head took the brunt of the accident. And for a good two years straight, I was in a state of fight or fight. My autonomic nervous system was completely off. I had so many injuries on the left side of my body, constantly dealing with chronic pain. And when you're in a lot of chronic pain, in the back, in the legs, in the hips, in the head, constant headaches, you're gonna have high cortisol levels. However, I was able to make this transformation. And my overall weight loss journey, I started off at 282 pounds. And it was a similar situation in that I was dealing with chronic pain. So why was I able to do it? Because I understand the power of reducing stress levels. So your body's able to let go and let weight loss happen. So on this channel, I like to talk about losing weight in ways that are not mainstream. Things like making the metabolic switch. I've lost the majority of my weight eating one meal a day, which is just a fasting schedule. All it is, everyone, is condensing your calories within a four hour eating window or a one hour eating window. You're not starving yourself. You're just fasting, taking advantage of the metabolic benefits because those metabolic benefits will help you get rid of very resistant weight loss in an environment that we have today that is a very obesogenic environment. Yes, it really is. Refined carbohydrates everywhere, everyone. Anyway, that's what I'm about on this channel. So let's jump into cortisol belly. And how do you know you have high cortisol levels? So signs of high cortisol levels include insomnia, waking up in the middle of the night, chronic fatigue, if you're a woman, irregular menstrual cycles, puffiness around the face, and you tend to store weight around the gut. Now, what causes this? Did you know that refined carbohydrates actually spike your cortisol levels? So here we go. Everything's tying together. If you watch my channel, you know. So when you eat refined carbohydrates or processed carbohydrates, they put a stress on our body because our body is not used to processing carbs naked. What do I mean by naked carbs? Carbs that are basically stripped of the polyphenols and stripped of the fiber. In nature, carbs are found with fiber. So when we eat foods like this, it stresses out our system because the human body actually adapted to consume carbs in a way that was, you know, like in fruit, paired with lots of fiber. So Processed carbohydrates will definitely spike your cortisol levels. Cortisol spiking foods will cause your body to retain more fat, not just because of cortisol, but in multiple ways. It will spike your insulin level. And when it spikes your insulin levels, it will spike your, your glucose levels. Obviously, those are related. Glucose levels go up, you eat food, your body senses the food, insulin gets activated. So when you're eating refined carbohydrate, it spikes your insulin levels like crazy. That up and down and up and down, that crash in insulin level spiking will induce more hunger. I know this because I wore a CGM on my channel. I've done fasting videos on it. And I know when my glucose levels would crash, that's when hunger will happen. Well, having those constant spikes, which have happens when you eat bad foods, so refined foods, refined carbohydrates, not all carbs are bad, it's just the processed carbs, it's going to stress your system physiologically. And that physiological stress is going to induce cortisol. It's just a vicious cycle. Extra cortisol is stored as 
fat. So it's stored in the fat. So when you have extra cortisol in your system and you don't use that cortisol, it gets stored in especially belly fat, the same thing with insulin. So what spikes your cortisol levels? Probably the number one thing is your mindset and stress. Stress will spike your cortisol levels. What are you telling yourself? How are you speaking to yourself? How are you responding to situations in life? How are you adapting to things? What are you watching? What are you feeding your brain? If you're constantly watching toxic things or drama things on YouTube or drama things in period, you're going to subconsciously spike your cortisol levels. So you have to be mindful of your mindset. I wanna talk about strategies you can use to help reduce your cortisol levels. Number one, exercise. Now exercise does spike your cortisol levels if you do it in a way that will stress you out and you do it repetitively and you don't allow your body a chance to recover. But exercise also can help reduce your cortisol levels. Now it depends on the type of exercises you do. And ironically and conveniently for you and me, the type of exercises that help to bring down your cortisol levels are the same type of exercises that will help you burn fat. So these are things like walking, swimming, a gentle jog, yoga, maybe doing a dance video, anything that keeps your heart rate in the zone one to zone two area. So low steady state cardio, list cardio, low intense steady state cardio is key. Today I did some, I went on the tread, not the treadmill, I went on the Stairmaster and I was at number one, like the first level. And I just did that for 30 minutes, keeping my heart rate between 125 and 130. So that will help bring down your cortisol levels. You want to balance out intense exercise with these cortisol loving or cortisol reducing exercises like recovery workouts, stretching, yoga, walking, like hiking, etc. Speaking of which, Walking outside will help you reduce your cortisol levels. When you walk outside and you go out for a walk in nature, you're scanning the horizon horizontally. What will spike your cortisol levels is being on your phone. That scrolling going up and down will spike your stress hormones and your cortisol levels, period. So go out for a walk, put your phone away, scan in the horizon. When you do that, it brings calming effects to your brain. It boosts serotonin. I highly recommend everyone walk. I'm actually hosting a steps challenge right now for this month. I'll link it in the art card above so you can do it whenever you see this video. Walking is pivotal in helping you reduce those cortisol levels. Another thing that will help you reduce cortisol levels is eliminating process, junk, food, get rid of it because it's going to spike up your levels. It's going to stress you out physiologically. And then you're going to have, you know, the whole circular cycle of doom with processed foods. Trust me. I know I was a binge eater. I binged my way up to 282 pounds. So avoid refined carbohydrates. What are refined carbohydrates? Things like white bread, cereal, pastas, rice. You want to reduce them. That is key. And if you're really trying to lose weight, you want to eliminate them for the time being so your body can balance out its cortisol levels and balance out other hormones as well. Now, fasting does spike your cortisol levels a little bit. However, I believe there's a counteracting effect with that because when you fast, you are going to be using up stored insulin and stored cortisol that is in your gut. However, where fasting goes wrong is when people do it for too long, do the same fast for too long. That is why it's important to vary your fast. Don't just be doing extended fast all the time or rolling fast all the time or own that all the time. You want to be able to vary your fast. You want to be able to do this fast and maybe take a break from fasting and do that fast. Cortisol is reduced when you fast, especially when you get to 36 hours because of the mental health benefits you get. And not only 36, 24 hours, you get the gut microbiome being resetted, which is so key in playing a role in our hormonal system. Not only that, you get stem cells produced in the gut at 24 hours. At 36 hours of fasting, you get the hormone known as GABA that is produced. And it's a neurotransmitter in the brain that causes a calming effect. So fasting can help bring down your cortisol levels if you do it correctly. The same thing with exercise. You just got to balance it out, vary your exercises. 
Another thing that can help bring down your cortisol levels is acupuncture and cupping. Acupuncture and cupping have actually been shown to reduce physiological cortisol levels because with cupping, it helps to remove stagnant blood. So when you're stressed, you tend to seize up. When you seize up, you tighten up and there's no circulation. So cupping allows for that circulation to come through, which is gonna allow your body to relax and heal itself and allows for blood flow and nutrients to circulate throughout the body. Acupuncture does it the same way, similarly in causing a positive effect to the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. That is what acupuncture does. And again, it improves circulation. Adaptogens are a great way to bring down your cortisol level. So adaptogens are things you can take that help to reduce your body's response to stress. It helps your body handle stress better. So adaptogens like ashwagandha, rhodiella rose, and Siberian ginseng, these are adaptogens that I am currently taking. Um, ashwagandha is really good in that it drops cortisol levels. Studies have shown that Ashwagandha actually drops blood serum cortisol levels. It reduces anxiety and it allows you to sleep better. Rhodiella rose is a great adaptogen that helps your body come back fatigue and it helps support your body through exercise. It's a bit of an exercise booster. It's been shown to improve athletic performance by increasing stamina. So anyone who's working out and exercising and you're trying to lose weight in that way, you want to use adaptogens to help your body respond to exercise better because again exercise is a stressor I'm talking about the more intense exercise so if you had a day like today like i have i had an intense exercise day where i was doing rdls did some glute bridges and was you know pushing it with the glute thrust machine and it was really intense i balanced that out by you know taking my adaptogens and then i will jump into breathing Breathing is probably the number one way you can help drop your cortisol levels. What do I mean? Taking deep belly breaths. Mindfulness meditation. That's the best thing you can do. Mindfulness meditation has been a huge part of my weight loss journey. As I struggled with tons of meta mental health struggles and I have childhood trauma like many of us do. And I combat this through meditation and learning how to get grounded and connecting with myself. Deep belly breaths can do a lot for your system. It will help you regulate your system, helps calm down the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system. It allows you to connect with yourself within. People who meditate daily reduce their stress levels. So it doesn't have to be you meditating for an hour every day. You can just do short bouts of meditation, short, short doubt, bouts of deep breathing, like things like box breathing, breathing in for four, holding for four, breathing out for four, and holding at the bottom for four, and then breathing in. There are so many strategies that you can do to help alleviate that. And deep breathing will also help you with losing weight. So especially post-exercise because your body goes through a process where it is basically recovering the oxygen debt that it loses from exercise because when you're exercising, your body has to use more oxygen to keep up with the energy demand. So post-exercise, if you do some deep breaths, your body is able to recover better, which is going to bring down that physiological cortisol levels and your overall cortisol levels in life in general. Anyway, I hope this video was useful for you. If you made it this far in the video, just drop in the word sunshine because I'm thinking of something happy, sunny days for all of us ahead. Never give up on yourself, guys. No matter how hard it gets, you can overcome stressful times. You have it within you. I'm right here with you fighting away and I'm sending you mad love. Take care. Bye.